grace, mercy, and peace. These are the gifts that are yours from God our Father and our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Most of us are familiar with Charles Dickens' classic, A Christmas Carol. Whether we have read it ourselves or whether we have seen one of the hundreds of movies that have been made about it, perhaps it was the Muppet version or the Mickey Mouse version or one of the other classic versions, perhaps even the old black and white. But we know the story, right? Ebenezer Scrooge is visited by three ghosts on Christmas Eve, the ghost of Christmas past, the ghost of Christmas present, and the ghost of Christmas future. The ghost of Christmas past shows old Ebenezer the good, the way that it used to be, his childhood back when he was innocent and Christmas was pure. And then the ghost of Christmas present shows Ebenezer his present situation. He shows him his greed and his idolatry of money and how he has impacted not only, how this has impacted not only his relationships, but also those around him. And then finally, the ghost of Christmas future points his bony finger to Ebenezer's future, his grave where he will surely die, and yet no one will be left to mourn him. Yes, no one mourns the death of the miserly Ebenezer Scrooge. Today, as we celebrate the Reformation of the Church, it can be sort of like being visited by ghosts. It is a day when we as Lutherans become often prideful, nostalgic, and we dwell on the ghosts of the past. And the temptation is to speak of people like Martin Luther as our Savior and lose sight of Jesus Christ altogether. Yes, the ghosts of the Reformation are on full display today, and we think about our past, present, and future, not only for ourselves, but as a church. Fortunately, our scripture readings give us guidance on how we are to think about the Reformation, how we are to think about the church's past, present, and future. Ebenezer Scrooge's ghost of Christmas past showed him what was good. He showed him the time of innocence and purity, the glory days of his youth. We might be tempted as Lutheran Christians to think about the church in the same way. The glory days of the Reformation, when doctrine was pure, when preachers preached and people listened, and when hostility toward the church was non-existent. But this is certainly a romanticized view of the Reformation, and quite frankly, untrue. Yes, in the time of the Reformation, there was hostility toward the church. Oftentimes that hostility came even within the church. At the time of the Reformation, there were false doctrines. At the time of the Reformation, preachers preached, but not everybody listened. It looked a lot like the church looks today. The church had its problems then, just as it has its problems now. It had its problems because the church was full of people, and as Romans chapter 3 tells us, people are sinners. All of them. Every single one of them is a sinner. For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And because of our sin, Jesus tells us of our past, that we were born into slavery to sin. We were, we were in bondage and captivity. We could not free ourselves. This is our past. So what is our present reality? What is our present reality in the church? And what is our present reality as individuals? 
Scrooge's present reality was that he was a greedy, idolatrous, selfish, and all-around unkind man. The church's present reality depends on the Word, the Word of God, and the individual's present reality depends on faith. The church cannot boast that because we bear the name of Martin Luther as Lutherans, therefore we are somehow better than others. There are many churches, sadly, who bear the name of Luther, who have altogether lost what it means to be Lutheran. They have lost the centrality of God's word in their church. Many of these churches will celebrate the Reformation today just as we celebrate it, but at the same time, they celebrate sexual deviancy, homosexual marriage. They celebrate and promote the practice of abortion in their church. And so, if the Word of God is not central to such a church, then being Lutheran is simply your name, and the church's present reality is quite grim. They would be like those Jews who said to Jesus in our Gospel reading today, We are sons of Abraham. We have never been enslaved by anybody. But to boast in Abraham, or to boast in Martin Luther, is to lose the gospel of Jesus Christ. So what is your present reality? Apart from faith, it is the same as your past. Once a sinner, always a sinner. You are still bound by your sin, and you are still a slave to sin. But by faith, the Son of God himself, Jesus Christ, has imparted a new reality to you. It is a justification through faith, salvation by his grace alone, that has set you free from your sins. And if the Son has set you free, then you will be free indeed. Your present reality depends on your faith in Christ, and your faith is fed by your church who brings you the word of God. Your faith was given to you in your baptism, at, at your baptism, a gift of the Holy Spirit. Your faith was confessed in your confirmation, just as Sarah today makes that confession of faith before us. Yes, your faith has been fed and nourished by the hearing of God's word. His words of law and his words of gospel, his word of condemnation and his comforting word of salvation. This word is what we pray to be kept steadfast in. And then, upon hearing this word, the Lord also strengthens you today with his supper. His Son's very body and blood given to you for the forgiveness of sins and the strengthening of your faith. Your present reality is not just that you are a sinner, but that you are a forgiven sinner, a redeemed sinner, a sinner who has been washed in the blood of the Lamb, Jesus Christ. And your sins are no longer counted against you. You are righteous. You are justified by faith apart from works of the law. And you belong to the Lord. He has claimed you as his own. And he will not abandon you. This, this is your present reality. Through grace by faith in Jesus Christ. This is the teaching of Scripture, the legacy of the Reformation. This is the truth of the Gospel. And so then, if this is your present reality, what of your future? What is your future? What is the future of the church? And what is your future as an individual Christian? The Lord has promised to His church that He has built His church on the pure confession of faith that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. This confession of faith 
is what the church is built on. This confession of faith is what Sarah will confess before us in just a few short moments. I promise, it's just a few. This confession of faith, Jesus builds his church on, and he makes the promise that the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Jesus promises that the church will endure until he comes again to take us to himself. This is our future reality. And so we as a church pray the prayer that we have just sang together. Lord, keep us steadfast in your word. Curb those who by deceit or sword would wrest the kingdom from your son and bring to naught all he has done. Lord Jesus Christ, your power make known, for you are Lord of lords alone. Defend your holy church, that we may sing your praise eternally. These are our prayers, that we would be kept steadfast in the word of God, that our faith may be unwavering, and that our salvation may be sure and certain. Salvation is your future. Resurrection is your future. Eternal glory is dwelling with God Almighty forever. That is our future. And so on this Reformation Sunday, we thank God for the gift that he has given us in his church. We thank God for pastors of the past, like Martin Luther, who have brought the church back to the Word of God. We thank God for pastors in the present who teach the centrality of God's Word and who preach justification by faith alone. And we pray to God for the future of the church, that he would continue to raise up Christians who are taught to confess their faith, and that he would continue to raise up faithful pastors so that this eternal gospel might be proclaimed to all future generations. The church has a past. The church indeed has a present, and the church certainly has a future. And God holds past, present, and future in his gracious hands. His mercy endures forever, and he will not fail us. As we talk about the ghosts of the Reformation, those past figures who brought us to where we are today, we should focus our attention instead on one ghost, the Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit, who calls, gathers, enlightens, and sanctifies this Christian church on earth. The Holy Spirit, who delivers the gifts of salvation to you, even this day. The Holy Ghost, who brings us to Jesus, and brings Jesus to us. By this Holy Spirit, may you also continue steadfast in the Word of God, unwavering in your faith so that the justification and salvation which he has won for you may be yours forever. Indeed, if the Son has set you free, you are truly free. If the Son has set you free, you are free indeed. In the name of Jesus, amen. And now may the peace which surpasses all understanding guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen.